Wouldn't it be great if there was an easy way to make all of the metal components in your engine much stronger than they are when they first come out of the factory? Well, we're going to look now at a method of doing this called cryogenic treatments. So cryogenic treatments basically involve the extreme cooling of those metal components and then allowing them to raise up to ambient temperatures and maybe even repeating that process a couple of times. So in this video, we're going to look at what that does to the metal, how it affects the lifespan of the metal and what the advantages are to doing this to your engine and we're going to discuss whether or not it's a mod that's worth you investing in or whether it's just something that should be reserved for the exclusive motorsports arena <laughs> So whenever you raise power in an engine, you're putting extra stress on all of the components in the engine. And you've got to accept as well that metal isn't rigid. It flexes, it bends, and it changes shape depending on its temperature as well. So there's a lot of additional stresses that happen to metal components in the engine, particularly those that are quite near to the combustion area where a lot of heat is generated. So cryogenic treatments is a way of making everything much stronger in the engine. So we're familiar with tempering metal, heating it up, and and cooling it down and the expansion and contraction of the metal itself actually affects the grains within the metal and can make the metal much stronger but if you do it wrong it can also cause other problems and imperfections and we note that with a lot of the heating processes you don't get the same uniformity that you would get through a cryogenic process so why are cryogenic treatments so effective think of metal as a crystal structure where you've got areas between the crystal filaments within it and metal is composed of many different components that affect the hardness of the metal itself. So when you temper metal, changes are happening within the metal itself. It undergoes a transformation where small uniform grains are formed within the structure of the metal itself, which makes it substantially stronger. So with tempering, you can adjust the hardness and the quality of the steel. Sometimes you may want the steel to be slightly more flexible than bristly hard. There's a, a big degree of manufacturing that goes in to produce steel of very, very precise quality to suit whatever application it is you're after. So when metal heats up, it expands, and when it cools, it contracts. That's happening throughout the metal itself, so it's affecting the grain structure of the metal to some extent, and the speed with which the heating and cooling process takes place also has a bearing on the end effect. So with a cryogenic treatment, the metal is typically cooled in liquid nitrogen, so temperatures go down to minus 300 degrees or so. Specialists will say that the colder you go, the better the end effect. Is. But we've seen some merits to having much higher temperatures relatively of minus 180 degrees. But in some cases, they will take that temperature right down to minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is substantially cold. That's even colder than my wife's feet. And I know that's quite hard to imagine, but it is. So the speed with which the temperature drops can be very precisely controlled. And that will have a bearing on the end result and also the speed with which it raises back up to ambient temperatures. So what's happening within the metal itself? Think of all the different layers, the lattices within the metal. And as it contracts with the cold, they're getting closer and closer together. The gaps between them is substantially reduced. And as it expands, you get a much more uniform grain forming because it's expanding at the same rate. But there's some interesting processes that are going on inside the metal itself. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But the overall cryogenic process can be repeated three or four times. And in some cases, it happens over a period of seven days or more. So it, a lot depends on what your end results are going to be. And I really would advise you consulting a specialist, not trying to do it in your backyard with a bucket of nitrogen. It works well on any metal part within the engine, but people will typically focus on the crank, the pistons, the camshaft, even the engine block itself, where strength, durability and resistance to wear are all desirable characteristics. So can you put a complete engine in the cryogenic chamber? Well, it's not a good idea because metals, as we've said, are comprised of different structures and different types of metal, different hardnesses. So they will expand and contract at different rates. So in the cryogenic process, you're causing an extreme contraction over a period of time. And that can actually cause problems within the metal if the metals contract 
at different rates. So you can introduce issues within the metal itself. And if there's other components keeping it together, typically your rubber seals and other things within the engine, they are not going to tolerate being kept extremely cold. And in some cases, things tend to become very, very brittle after a cryogenic treatment. So cryogenic treatments are very much a process for engine parts, not for complete engines, and they will require assembly afterwards. So the cooling and the warming up process aligns the molecules within the metal and allows them to be much closer together and much more uniformly laid out throughout the structure of the metal. So at the molecular level, some changes are taking place. The austenite within the metal is converted to martensite, which leads to an increase in hardness and raises the wear resistance of the metal itself. The process also forms carbides and nitride, which further improve the toughness and wear resistance of the metals itself. So austenite, what is that? Austenite is a phase of iron and steel, and it exists at extremely high temperatures, typically 1,600 Fahrenheit. It's known as the, the austenitic phase, and it's a metallic face-centered cubic crystal, and it is stable at high temperatures. So when you actually make steel, it's a combination of carbon, iron, and other elements. The quality of the steel and strength and its properties are determined by the amount of carbon in the steel and the cryogenic process adjusts the carbon structure into eta carbides and these eta carbides which you can actually see under a microscope make the metal much stronger, much more durable and improve its wear resistance. So it's generally accepted that the more eta carbides you have in a steel the stronger it is, the more it will resist the wear. So austenite is a very useful phase for the steel industry because it, it does a lot to determine the characteristics of the metal itself. You can control the formation of other microstructures within the metal, including martensite, ferrite and perlite. When austenite is cooled rapidly, it converts to martensite, which is a harder and stronger phase for the metal. And when it's cooled slowly, it can transform into ferrite and perlite which have got different mechanical properties. Austenite is also important because it's got high solubility for carbon and other alloying elements within the metal itself and that really allows a lot more control over the grades of the steel that you're producing. So whenever a metal is formed there are generally imperfections within the metal no matter how careful you are with the heat process, the casting, the forging, the tempering processes you're going to have imperfections within that steel itself. In some cases that can cause premature failure of those steel parts. But in most cases, it's not so much of an issue. It just reduces the overall lifespan and life expectancy of those metal components. But the cryogenic process reduces those residual stresses within the metal itself. And it reduces the likelihood of cracking or distortion from taking place, particularly when the metal is further exposed to heating and cooling phases as you would get in your typical combustion engine. So cryogenics has been used to harden surfaces of cutting blades because it dramatically increases the wear resistance and the strength of the blade itself and it's finding its way into motorsports and vehicle tuning now where people are really appreciating what it does for your parts. So what are the benefits of cryogenic treatment in terms of lifespan of the engine and the components? So it reduces internal friction, the surfaces are much more uniform, much smoother so there's less heat generated with those surfaces rubbing over each other and some sources are quoting eight times the wear resistance on cryogenic genically treated part. We've spoken to motorsport teams and where they would typically have to strip down an engine and rebuild it halfway through a season. If the parts have been cryogenically treated, that engine can go on to last a full season or even maybe two seasons. So it does have a substantial bearing on the engine's need to be stripped down and rebuilt. There's a significant cost saving there for motorsport teams where you can just subject the engine to this cryogenic process and guarantee that those parts are going to last much longer and be a lot more durable. So is it worth doing? Well, you've got to weigh up the cost of having the cryogenic treatment carried out in the first place. You would typically need to strip the engine down or you'll be sourcing components to go into a new build engine. So in that situation, you've already got part of the work done. The engine is in pieces. And depending on the cost of your local cryogenic specialist, you need to weigh up whether the increased wear resistance is going to be worth it for your project. Are you wanting to push the power to those extreme levels where the stresses are going to cause failures within the 
engine. So in a lot of cases, just cryo treating the stock parts or the manufacturer parts can often outperform a lot of aftermarket performance parts, which cost substantially more. So you very much got to weigh up your, your budget, what your aims and aspirations are for the cryogenic process. And if you're using the engine hard or you plan to keep the engine a long time, it certainly is worth thinking about getting cryogenic treatments carried out on certain parts of the engine. Even if it's only the cranks, the pistons, the rods and the camshaft, the areas of highest wear within the engine. So please subscribe if you haven't done so. We would love you to stay tuned to the channel. We've got more in-depth tuning articles coming up covering other things that maybe people haven't thought of or been exposed to that can make a substantial difference to the power you get in your project. So please have a look at this next video, which I've lined up for you. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching and please boot that like button because it really does help.